and welcome to another episode of Accessibility. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility, and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games and more people to see themselves in the games they play? Now, like a lot of people, I've not been great at staying in shape during lockdown. There's a lot of emotions happening, everything's a bit scary, junk food is a very easy way to fix those feelings, and going outside to exercise means going out where the germs are, and uh, it's not great. As a result, as I said, I've been a bit lazy, and I don't think I'm alone in that, because during lockdown I have picked up a game again that I think a lot of people have, judging by sales numbers. One sec, here it is. Ring Fit Adventure. Released back in October 2019, Ring Fit Adventure is a cross between an exercise routine management game and an RPG. Players run through levels by jogging or sprinting on the spot, and use a resistance band to blast through obstacles, perform large jumps, or suck items closer to themselves. In battles experienced throughout levels, players pick from a variety of different exercises that are used as JRPG attacks, shielding with abdominal presses and attacking by doing effective squats or yoga poses. A story involving an evil buff dragon man gives the workouts a sense of purpose and drives the game forwards in an interesting way. Playing through the game's opening levels was a pretty strenuous workout for me, as someone a little bit out of shape. I worked up a considerable sweat fighting my way through the game's first boss fight, with the presence of a boss health bar helping to encourage me to just push through the challenge and get those extra couple of reps done. I need to play more of it, I need to stick with this game more, but I am excited about the prospect of Ring Fit Adventure becoming a part of my ongoing lockdown exercise routine. Now, with all that being said, I can handle most of the content in Ring Fit Adventure pretty well. I'm a little out of shape, but otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm able to do most things that an exercise program might ask me to do, but that got me thinking. How accessible is Ring Fit Adventure to people with disabilities, and particularly to players who might be wheelchair users, or might have other reasons that they find it difficult to sprint up and down on the spot repeatedly? While the game's accessibility options certainly aren't perfect, I was pleasantly surprised by how many options there were to allow various people to continue playing this exercise game if they may not have full mobility of their body. I was impressed even if there's a little bit of way it needs to go. Despite a couple of problems here and there, I was pleasantly surprised to find that Ring Fit Adventure has some good options on show to help people with various disabilities be able to keep playing their exercise game. If you dig into the menus for Ring Fit Adventure, one of the settings you can toggle for your adventure mode profile is assist mode, in which certain muscle groups or body parts can be toggled on or off if you have trouble with them. The assist modes on show include shoulder assist, back assist, ab assist, and knee assist. The primary one that I'm going to dig into today is knee assist, as it impacts the largest number of areas of the game, but much the same changes apply to other assist modes. Basically, anything I talk about with knee assist probably applies to the other assist modes as well, if you have problems with your shoulders or your back, for example. So, turning on knee assist mode and sitting down to play the adventure mode of the game, a few key changes were apparent right from the start. A big part of adventure mode is jogging or running on the spot through environments, and with knee assist turned on, this aspect of the adventure is completely automated. Your character will jog automatically through environments, sprinting when it's vital to level completion. This means that traversal of the adventure mode is possible for players who, for example, may only have reliable or pain-free use of their arms. Players can still use the resistance band to fire blasts at obstacles, suck in collectibles, and propel themselves off the ground. All of the arm-based world traversal exercises work as intended. One thing that's not ideal about this is that, at the end of every level, players have the option to check their heart rate to see how intense of a workout the game deems they've undertaken. Obviously, the game is expecting the player's heart rate to have been elevated in correlation to jogging for several minutes, so users with assist mode active may be ranked by the game as having had a very light workout. The game doesn't adjust its expectations of what constitutes a strenuous workout when cardio elements are automated. Some in-game activities which would previously have been a leg exercise plus an arm exercise, such as the end of level 
battle squat into standing up victory pose with arms above your head, are replaced with button presses instead. The game doesn't ask players to simply do the arm element of the exercise, it just gets rid of it completely, which is a bit unfortunate. Now let's get onto combat exercise accessibility. With knee assist activated, there are some exercises in your starting set of attacks which will still be present in the attack list, but simply won't be possible to activate. If you're seated, the squats exercise for example can't be activated because it expects you to be standing to start the exercise. No button option is offered to replace squats, so that attack on your combat screen simply doesn't function. There are also exercise attacks such as the knee to chest, which may be accidentally activated from a seating position, despite their unsuitability for those with issues using their legs or knees. If you accidentally enter an activity that you cannot complete, you may have to cheat and move the leg joy-con around using your hands, because the game doesn't give you any option to back out of an activity once you've locked into it, and that's not great. But with those caveats out of the way, around 60% of your starting set of combat attacks do work while seated. Some of those only include arm components, while some expect a stationary seated position, so many of the upper body exercises do still work. Also, you unlock additional exercises as you play through the game, so within a few days you should be able to unlock enough new abilities, ones that you're able to complete, that you can replace and remove the attacks that you can't use on the combat menu. While it's not a perfect solution, Knee Assist seems to do a pretty good job of keeping the game's upper body exercise content intact while removing aspects which might be difficult for wheelchair users or those with other knee and leg usage difficulties. The other three assist modes seem to be pretty similar in their execution for their specific muscle groups and body areas, if any of those are a concern for you personally. Additionally, the game lets you pause at literally any time with no penalty. Do you need to rest or recover from pain during a set of reps? Just stop and the game will wait. Do you need to give up on a held action? You can't keep holding it any longer? No problem, try it again when you're ready. Sudden expected pain or weakness won't penalise your performance if you need to stop. While it's not perfect, it is really nice to see a game about exercise try to include as many people as possible in being able to play the game. The ability to avoid exercises that you can't personally do, and tailor your workout to exercises that do work for you, does make this more accessible than a lot of interactive exercise media. Now, I need to get back to exercising. I'm probably going to do some more squats while this video renders, so uh, Get your exercise on, Laura. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh.